Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. In this tutorial series, we are creating this website using Next.js. Now in this video, I'll show you how to design the create new page. So if I click on this create new button, here we can see we have the create new page. So in this video, we will design this. So let's get started. All right, this is our progress. So let's go to our code and let's go to the app folder and let's create a new folder called create post. And in that we'll create a new file called page.tsx. And let's tap export default function, create post. And for now let's return a div. Let's tap create post. And now if we go back to our website and if we go to create post, here we can see we have the create post page. Now for the create post form, we'll create a component. So let's go over here to components and let's create a new component called create post form dot tsx and here let's tap export default function create post form and let's return a div i'll just type create post form and let's go back to the page dot tsx file of create post and here we'll just import the component so let's type create post form from at components create post form and now we can see it says create post form so now let's go ahead and write the ui for this form so let's go back to this component so let's go ahead and delete this text and uh, first of all let's create an h2 and let's type create post and uh, here we can see we have the h2 and then we need to have a form so let's create a form element and i'll just remove the action and uh, here let's create an input field and uh, let's set the type to text and let's add a placeholder and let's type title and uh, here we can see we have the input field and then we need to have the content now for the content we will have a text area because there will be multiple lines of content so let's tap text area and uh, i'll just remove all of this and uh, let's tap placeholder and let's set it to content and then we need to have the links so for the link we need to have an input field and we need to have this add button so let's go outside this text area and let's create a div for this and uh, in the div we will have an input field and the type will be text and let's add a placeholder and here let's type paste the link and click on add so here we have the input field and then we need to add a button so let's create a button and here let's type add and for the button let's add a class name and let's type btn so here we have this add button and we also need to add this uh, icon so for that we will use heroicons.com and here let's search for add and uh, i'll just add this icon right here i'll just select mini and uh, let's copy this jsx and uh, let's paste it over here before the text so i'll just add the icon inside a span and uh, now here we can see we have this add button now this icon should be on the left side and the text on the right side so for that let's go ahead and uh, set the display to flex and uh, let's add a gap of two and items center and then we need to add this image upload button and for that we're going to use uh, cloudinary so we will create this later when we set up cloudinary so let's continue with the next element which is this drop down so let's go ahead and go below the division and uh, let's go ahead and create a select and uh, in the select we need to have options so the first option is gonna be select a category so here we can see we have the drop down and we need to get all the categories and add it over here so if you go back to the data.js file here we can see that we have all these categories data so let's get the categories from here so here let's go to the create post form and uh, let's import the categories data so let's tap import categories data from at data and uh, here let's go ahead and uh, check whether we have any categories and if we have the categories then uh, let's type categories dot map and for each of the category i'll just call it category and uh, here we'll just return an option and in the option we need to have the category name so here we can see we have name and id inside the categories data so let's access the name so here let's type category dot name 
and we also need to add a key so let's type key equals category dot id and uh, let's set the value so let's type value equals category dot name all right that's it with the categories drop down so here we can see we have all the categories displayed now the next thing we need to have is this button so for that let's go ahead and go after this select and let's create a button and uh, this button is gonna be a type of submit and uh, here let's type create post and for this button let's add a class name and we will give it a class of primary button and let's style it in the global.css file so let's go over here to global.css and uh, let's add some styles so let's type primary button and let's type at apply and let's type padding left and right of four padding top and bottom of two bg slate 800 for the background color and text of white and let's type rounded md for rounded corners and uh, here is the button right now let's go ahead and style all of this so let's go back to the create post page and the component and here for the form let's add some styles so let's type class name and we'll set the display to flex and the flex direction to column and let's add a gap of two right now let's add some styles to all the input fields so let's go back to the global.css file and let's add the styles over here so here let's tap input and text area and let's tap add apply let's set the padding left and right of four padding top and bottom of two and let's set a border and let's set the border to slate 300 and let's tap rounded md for rounded corners and uh, for the text area we will have a specific height so let's tap text area and let's tap at apply h of 36 and uh, this is how it looks we have all the input fields styled right now we need to have this input field on the left side and this add button on the right side so here we have this division so let's add a display of flex so let's tap class name flex and uh, let's add a gap of two now we need to take up the full available width for this input field so here for the input field let's type class name and uh, let's set the flex to one and now we can see it has the full width right now let's style this drop down so here we have the drop down so let's type class name and uh, let's add padding of three and rounded md and let's add a border and let's also remove this arrow from here so for that you have to type appearance none now after this button we'll also have the error displayed so if you go over here to the original design and if i click on create post here we can see we have the error message title and content are required so let's go ahead and uh, here just after the button let's create a div and here let's type error message and uh, let's add some classes so i'll just type class name and let's set it to padding of two text red 500 and font bold so here we have the error message now when we add a link and click on add it should be displayed over here at the top so if we go over here to the original design and if i add a link so for example if i just type https google.com and if i click on add we can see that the link is being displayed over here and we also have the icon and this delete button so let's add this functionality so for that we're going to use states in react so here let's go ahead and create a new state so here let's create a state and uh, let's call it links and here let's tap set links and let's set it equal to use state and let's import it from react and by default this is going to be an empty array so let's add that over here and for the type let's type string and this is going to be an array of string so now if we hover over this we can see that it says it is an array of strings now we also need to create a state for the input fields so here we can see we have these input fields for the link and we need to get the value of this input field so let's create states for that so I just tap const and uh, let's call it link input and set link input and let's set it equal to use state and it's gonna be blank for now and uh, now if we go back to our website here we can see we have this error because uh, we are using use state and when we use use state we need to change this component into a client component so let's go over here at the top and uh, let's type use client and now we don't have any errors 
Right now what we need to do is whenever we make changes to the input field, we need to store that to this link input state. So this is the input field for the link. So here I'll just type on change and here I'll just access the data and I'll just call it E and here let's call the function which is set link input and let's set it equal to E dot target dot value. So now whatever text we add inside this input field will be added to this link input state and let's set the value to the link input. Right now let's create a function to add this link input to this links state. So for that let's tap const and I'll just call it add link and uh, we're going to get some data over here and uh, I'll just call it e and let's set the type to react dot mouse event and html button element and uh, mouse event and let's tap e dot prevent default so this will prevent the default behavior which is reloading the page and then we need to check whether we have any text inside the link input so let's tap if link input is not equal to blank and he will also add a trim so that it will remove the unnecessary spaces and uh, here let's tap set links and we need to add this new link to the existing links so for that let's access the previous elements so for that you can just access a variable i'll just call it prev and uh, here let's type dot 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 prev to extract all the elements and after that we'll just add the link input that we just got and then we'll just set the link input to blank so let's tap set link input and let's set it to blank. So now whenever we click on this add button, this uh, data will be stored to the links state. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to display the links over here just before this uh, div. So let's go outside the text area and uh, here let's type curly braces links and let's see whether we have any links. And if we have any links, then let's type links dot map. And for each of the link, I'll just call it link. We'll also access the index for adding it as a key. So here let's type i for the index. And uh, here we'll just return a div. And uh, let's set the key to i. Now here we need to display the link. So let's create a link tag and let's import it from next link. And uh, here let's type link. And uh, for the href, let's set it to link as well. Right now let's go ahead and call this function add link when we click on this add button. So here for this button, let's type on click and let's tap add link. Right now let's go back to our website and let's add some text over here and let's click on add. And here we can see that test is being displayed and let's tap test 2 and let's click on add. And here we have the second text displayed. Right now let's style this. So here we can see we need to have this uh, icon and also this delete button so further let's go over here to hero icons and uh, let's search for link and let's copy this link from here let's click on copy jsx and uh, let's paste it over here just before the link and just create a span for that and then after that we need to have the delete button so for the delete button let's create a span and uh, let's search for delete and let's copy this uh, trash icon from here. So let's click on copy JSX. And let's paste it over here. Right now let's go back and uh, let's add some text. And here we have the icons displayed. Now let's style it. So here for the container division, let's tap class name. And uh, let's set the display to flex. Items center. And let's set a gap of 4. Let's also change the color of the link. So for the link, we already have this class called link in global.css file. So let's add that class over here. So here for the link, let's type class name, link. And here we have the correct color and the styles. Now when we click on this delete button, we need to delete the link. And let's also set the cursor to pointer. So here for the delete span, let's type class name and cursor pointer. Now we can see that the cursor is set to pointer. Now for deleting the link, we'll create a function and uh, let's call it delete link. So here I'll just tap on click and uh, here let's call the function called delete link and we'll just pass the index. So here we can see we are getting the index. So let's pass the index over here. But now let's go ahead and uh, create this delete link 
function so here let's tap const delete link equals and we'll get the index over here and uh, it will be a type of number and uh, here let's tap set links and let's get all the previous uh, links and let's use the filter function from javascript so let's tap prev dot filter now in this filter method let's go ahead and access the index here we can see that the index is the second argument so for the first one i'll just type underscore and for the next one i'll just tap i for the index and uh, here we need to check whether the index is not equal to i so let's tap i is not equal to the index that we get from the function call so this will search for the link with the index that you provide over here and it will see whether the index and this index are same and if they are the same then it will just delete the link so let's go ahead and see whether it works so let's go back and uh, let's add a new link let's click on add and let's click on delete and we can see that the link is deleted so everything is working all right so that's basically it with the create post page and that's it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day